CQ. Yeah, we're back again for another great video. Happy Sunday, you guys. So, Happy Sunday. Yeah, today we want to just like kind of get right to the point. Um, so I've been working on the stuff for Don't Be Bitter, Be Better. I think I'm going to stand. I have a lot of energy today. So what we've been doing there is a fly in here, that's why I was just like... And there's what? a fly went by. Well, okay. Let's talk about it. Why? Listen, I be in here. No flies. Then when I turn on the camera... There's a fly. There's a fly. Oh, no. It's ridiculous. Okay, so. Once again, happy Sunday. I'm going to stand because I have a lot of energy right now. And also, Erica just ate sweet potato. And that's huge because she asked for it. Normally only Eric eats sweet potato and Erica's the picky one. Today she had sweet potato and I was like. With her brother. I was like, thank you for God in heaven. We bow our heads and we thank you for God for your grace and your mercy. Amen. Amen. So I've been working on Don't Be Bitter, Be Better and you guys have like some awesome questions like this is going to be so live. Um, as soon as we're done with this video, actually, I'm going to record. Is that a mosquito? Looks <sighs> like it. I'm going to let my mom just go ahead because right now I'm feeling a little crazy. We are really going to talk about actually having some confidence in yourself. You know, we've always been the kind of people, and me included, where we always wanted to kind of dumb ourselves down because we have degrees and we're smart and we don't always fit in. Yeah, because sometimes it's hard, especially now, and it's no disrespect, but I think people know what I'm saying. It's sometimes very difficult to be smart, educated, and black, and a woman, because no matter how much you exude your confidence, it's seen different by different people in different circumstances. So you have to learn how to, you know. Kind of put yourself a little in the background, like. Okay, but really, I'm really just here because today I want people to stop apologizing for being so fly. Seriously. You know, like, I had a conversation with my life coach. Shout out to Justin. Wonderful person. So, I was having a conversation with my life coach. And I was talking to him about a time in our life when we dated. Right, I used to date my life coach way back in 2003. And that was before the self-esteem queen was ever here. I was just working really hard and, you know, I, I had a lot of stuff going on. And anyway, one day he sat me down and he said, Mama, I can't be with you anymore because you're rotten on the inside. And... He became my life coach, and he helped to mold who you guys know as the self-esteem queen. He taught me a lot about forgiveness of others and of self. He taught me how to eat sensibly. He taught me how to enjoy life. He taught me that it's okay to take trips and know absolutely nobody where you're going. Shout out to Canada. And 
he taught me so much about my life that today when he made a statement he said he's seen my growth and he's very proud of my growth and when somebody who's known you since 2003 and seen the good and the bad of you it is really a compliment when first of all they still deal with you this many years later second of all they deal with you and they actually like dealing with you justin i appreciate you as my coach but one thing that justin is helping me to understand is that i really don't have a reason to apologize for being so fly and i'm not talking about physically fly though <laughs> pay attention as my son would say, follow me, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I'm not talking about that kind of fly. So I know I'm that kind of fly. I'm talking about stop apologizing for being intelligent. Stop, stop apologizing for being, you know, an astute business person. Stop apologizing for being, you know, a very successful entrepreneur. Stop apologizing for being an awesome parent. Stop apologizing for retiring your mom before retirement age. Stop apologizing for the lifestyle that you live. Stop apologizing and most of all, stop humbling yourself, right? To this point of like being totally humiliated, right? Because the reality is that I have been doing that. I've been humbling myself. And she's had to sit here and deal with me humbling myself. And there is a fine line because I really don't like to ever let my ego get involved in being a servant leader. But at a certain point, it's like, you know, I have to pause and <laughs> kind of let you guys know the things that I don't really get to put on social media because I live a whole life that I never talk about on social media. So the example one, these are recent examples. Example one, I was um, at Sioux Plantation with my girl Shadia. Shout out to Dr. Shahid Edwards. And it's her birthday yesterday, by the way, so happy, happy birthday. birthday. And I can't believe you put that video on Facebook, but anyway. Um, so we're at Sioux Plantation, we're, you know, talking or whatever. And I look over to my left and this woman is like, it looks like she's like, having a, a, a stroke she it, it was it was a bad situation she was older in her 90s and i stopped the conversation and i just got up and i started praying well unbeknownst to me this minister had walked over you wouldn't have known he was a minister because he didn't pray he was just on the phone in 911. i'm not knocking the minister i'm just saying he i didn't see him like praying over her or whatever and i'm not saying that he had to do that i'm just simply saying that i stood there where i was and i just started to pray and i did not stop praying and so then this other woman was walking back and forth. She wasn't with these people and she was just like going crazy, you know. And so as I'm praying, I walk her outside because she's not making the situation any better because she's screaming for the paramedics. And how can you scream for somebody who's on their way and they can't hear you screaming? And so it was making the situation a little tense. So I took her outside <clears throat> only to find out that her mom had died the night before. Oh, so here I am. You know, and I'm ministering to two different families. So anyway, I come back in and I start praying over this lady. I'm now closer to this lady. So I start praying over this lady, speaking in tongues. And I promise you guys, the lady came too. <clears throat> I'm sorry, did you hear me? I said, the lady came too. Now... I'm not saying that that was me at all. I'm not saying that was me at all. It was God using you, though. You understand? And her family recognized it. My friend Shadia recognized it. I, of course, recognized it. But how do you put that on social media? Like everybody else does. And I've talked to her family since then, who, of course, have called me to thank me for what happened. You know, and I mean... And the lady is still here. She's still here. You know, and and it I'm, wasn't and it wasn't a stroke. It wasn't a stroke. 
you know, the, the lady hadn't been out and, you know, she just was, you know, having, having problems breathing or whatever. And, you know, because she was, you know, she's in a weakened state. I mean, yeah. she's in her nineties. My dad's in his nineties. So, you know, sometimes it just takes somebody to pray and it's not an ego thing, but I know that I'm a healer. I'm very well aware that I'm a healer. Um, another recent, a girl that I put on my Facebook page was missing. And, you know, I ended up uh, talking to her and going to her house and, you know, having a conversation with her. And, you know, we're always so quick to, you know, talk about, you know, teenagers that run away, but they obviously are hurting for whatever reason. And sometimes we forget that we were once teenagers, but I'm always in that state of empathy. And so, for some reason, I can get people who are, who are mute to talk. I'm not going to keep, like, dumbing down what I do. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to keep doing that. And my life coach helped me to just see, like, people need that from me. Like, they need to, you know, see me at my best. And for the people that think it's gloating, you obviously don't know me. Like, I'm not gloating at all. But it's really important that you understand, I know who I am, I know what I do, I know the boundaries that I have in my life are set for a reason because I'm a healer and healers can only deal with and be around certain people, places, and things. And a lot of you are probably healers and because you're around the wrong people, places, and things, it's difficult for you to be in the state of healing, which is what God put you here to do. He put you here to make disciples that would then go out and make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. You feel me? That's what you're here for. And oftentimes, you know, we're looking around to see if people see what we have going on. You can't apologize for your <laughs> gifts. And whatever God has given you as a gift, it is your responsibility to use it. And it has nothing to do with use it or lose it. It has to do with, at the end of the day, there's someone higher that you've got to answer to. And if you haven't used your gifts, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I mean, sometimes we don't use our gifts because we just don't want to admit how, you know, like how fly we are. And you are fly. And you know you are fly in whatever capacity that your flyness is. Like you are fly. Like my mom, she had to like get back to the point where she was like, oh, okay, I know how to like run a, run a child care facility. Oh, better yet. Oh, yeah. I, I know how to write curriculum. Yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. You homeschooled me. So sometimes you have to like dust off, you know. You have to. You, you have, have to, to. You have to take the cobwebs out of your head and kind of sweep what you used to do and what you were good at. I mean, I run a business for so long that I sometimes forget I'm 16 years in the game. This is year 16. I started my business, my legal business, right out of college. So. Most people's businesses don't last past three years. The average business doesn't last past three years. I'm 16 years in the game. Okay, so that's why I charge what I charge. And by the way, you know, some people who think that I charge a lot to speak, first of all, I charge between 6,500, 7,000 per speech, right? And I charge nonprofits a reduced rate, 2,500 most of the time. Okay, but I've been a regular on the Maury Show. I've been a regular on the Trisha Show when that was on. I was a regular on the Bill Cunningham Show. I've done consulting for these types of talk shows for now 2000. When did I have the twins? 2012, 2013, 14, 15, so four years. I've, I've spoken all over the world. I've been speaking since I was fat and had hair. <laughs> Why and should, that's, that's been a while. That was 2003. <laughs> So if that's who I was and that's what I've been doing, why would I not? People that do what I do charge way more than me. Lisa Nichols. Charges a lot. And she's worth every freaking penny. You know, but even in my serving, I charge this fee, right? I pay myself a small fee. And then the rest goes right back into the SEQ Hope Foundation. So... I'm, I'm warranted and qualified to charge what I charge. And I'm not going to keep dumbing that down for people. You know, there I wouldn't have the clients that I have. I wouldn't have certain contracts that I have if it weren't for my professionalism. 
the length of time I've been in business, my consistency over everything, you know, and the fact that I'm really easy to work with and I'm very knowledgeable. Like, I'm not going to be stupid and say that, like, I'm stupid. Like, yeah, I may have been in different places in my life, but I've always had a very high IQ. I've always been gifted and talented. I've always been that student that was above everybody else. Like, that's who I've always been. Yeah, I had issues mm -hmm. when I was a kid, but, I mean, what kid doesn't? So now I'm helping the kids that have issues to understand that they're beautiful and wonderfully made. They're probably brilliant. And let's work on whatever your issues are that are causing you to cut up your skin and slap yourself in the face. And, and or be promiscuous, let's deal with that issue, right, so that you can live your best life. Let's not wait until you're like in your 30s or 40s to say, oh, okay, now I'm ready to live my best life. Let's live your best life now. And don't apologize for it. Don't apologize. I'm not going to apologize for charging what I charge for candles. Not when I have candles that are sitting in five-star hotels and four-star hotels from here to San Francisco to Oregon. You understand? And people are paying upwards of $65 to $125, $150 for those candles that are private label. It's a tax deduction. I'm not going to keep apologizing for being a business person. I'm not going to apologize for marketing my business. I'm not going to apologize for talking about my wins in my business. We've all had failures. And I talk about those as well. I talk about failures that I've had, whether it be failures in relationships, failures in friendships, failures in business partnerships. I don't blame everybody else. I take the blame for the things that I owned, you know, like things that, that I own. Right. I own my issues. But I'm not going to own being dumb because it helps somebody else to not feel inferior to me. Like, there is no competition amongst my friends. So for the people that follow me, Please don't apologize for being fly. Don't apologize. I'm not apologizing for, you know, making sure that my mom gets on every beach from here to Timbuktu. I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm not going to apologize for, you know, possibly living a life where, you know, I just go from, you know, country to country living in Airbnbs. And, you know, I'm not going to apologize for that life. I'm not going to flaunt it like, ha ha, look at me. I'm going to let you know that it's okay to live your life by showing you that I live mine. And there's a difference, and it's a mindset. And if that's not your mindset yet, you should probably sign up for the free series that begins tomorrow, Don't Be Bitter, Be Better, How to Eliminate Toxic People, Places, and Things in Your Life. You can go to selfesteemqueen.com and sign up for it now. It's absolutely positively free. There's absolutely nothing that I want in return except for you to take the time to listen to the information because you may be a hater or you may know a hater that needs the information that I'm here to give. And this is the third time that I'm doing it. I've had so many people sign up for it that I'm not even going to try to wait for, you know, there to be a perfect time frame to do it. I'm going to upload the audio to a page on my website that's just going to be password protected. You'll get the password as soon as you sign up for this free teleseries. And you'll be able to go in, download the PDF for each week. And we're just going to go step by step. What are the toxic places in your life and not all places are physical some are mental some are emotional you know what are the toxic things in your life you know what are the what are the maybe it could be procrastination maybe it could be you know overeating whatever consistency that, consistency you know pro, whatever whatever that is and who are the toxic people in your life the people that you've had around for too long because you've just known them for so long and that's just who they are yeah that may just be who they are but you don't have to be around them because that's who they are you know, learning how to eliminate people that no longer serve their purpose in your life, making sure that you're not being used and you're also not using other people, learning how to not take it personally when people X you out of their life or when it's time for you to X people out of your life, not, you know, ho holding on and harboring to negative energy that surrounds letting go of situations. You have to let go of things in order to get other things. So we're going to talk about that in the series. And then, you know, if you just want to help out the work that I do. Of course, you can always donate to the SEQ Hope Foundation. And I never ask people to donate to the SEQ Hope Foundation by just giving me money. I give you something in return. And that is at lightthemood.com, L-I-G-H-T. When you go to lightthemood.com, you can see the different things that we offer. I make handmade organic soy essential oil filled candles. And 
I have a luxury collection. We have the HOPE collection. HOPE stands for Hold On Possibilities Exist. Soon coming is our Native American collection. And we also are going to have a collection for child sex trafficking. So all the candles that are purchased from that collection will help the work that I do in abolishing child sex trafficking. And the candles for the Native American will go for the work that I do when I go on Native American reservations and help the young kids who are dealing with suicide, depression, and incest because that's something else that I work with. And of course, how do you get somebody to say, oh yeah, Dawn helped me to overcome having sex with my brother. That's the hard work that I do. And I know everybody can't do it and I can't do it alone. So it's with your support that I do get it done. And I appreciate you guys for everything you do. But again, please do not apologize for being fly. And with that, we're out. It will be uh, great to see you guys later. But if we don't, you know, well, we will, so we, we won't will. even think that that so. Have a great day, and we love you, and there's absolutely, positively nothing, nothing you, you can, can do, do about, about it. it. Oh, and shout out to my friend Sagira, who just had a little baby girl, Janiyah. I love you, Guy. And I am so happy and so excited to see the baby again. Shout out to everybody else who I haven't talked to but should be talking to, and I'll get to you guys. So shout out. Have a great day. See you later. <laughs>